pleasure, I get to introduce the head honcho of Benzinga. You guys are probably like, who's behind this? You've actually probably met him already today. Please give it up for the CEO of Benzinga, Jason Rasnick. And, and he's going to be moderate. And I'll introduce this guy. If you talk about energy, this guy. All right, that's good. We got music. This, this guy, Chad Bronstein, is the most energetic, driven entrepreneur that I'm going to say in this industry. This guy not only has Philo, not only Tyson 2.0 and more companies. We are pumped to introduce the man, the myth, the legend, Chad Bronstein from Philo. Neil, take the mic. There. Neil, Thanks. grab the mic. Thank you. We got that. You guys ready to rock it out? All right, we're gonna uh, sit here. What's up? What's up? Thank you for that great introduction. Yes, we got. I mean, it's not great. I mean, this guy. I, I don't know if you guys know about this guy, but I, I want to put a camera for the day in the life of Chad Bronson. So, like, what time do you get up at? What time do you end at? Um, I get up about six o'clock in the morning. Every day? Yeah, he's about five thirty. Go for a run. Then my son wakes up. Hang out with him. Um, you know, work, work pretty much until uh, later on, and then hang out with my son and my wife. And then uh, Jeff calls me up at nine o'clock at night, or Adam Wilkes calls me up at twelve. We're sitting over there, and I, I take up the phone. I pick up the phone. But how, like, so we're we're gonna start Philo, okay? And I know there's 2,600 people watching remotely, but Philo, like, how did you start this company? What was the problem you saw in the industry? So prior to starting Philo, I was running a large ad tech company and um, I was bored, right? Probably the same way you built Benzinga. Um, and I just wanted to do something new. And we had brands like Jewel and Charlotte's Web come into Amobi, but it's owned by Singtel, so we wouldn't touch cannabis. And so I had to make a crucial decision. I had a bunch of offers, you know, I was doing well. I had to tell my wife, I'm gonna go start a cannabis company. And she's like, what the fuck, a cannabis company? And I said, yes, cannabis company. So I went at it, I hit up Aristotle, Eric, a lot of these, Jeff, all these people here. And I said, hey, if I go start this, will you come? And uh, we started Philo three years ago. We're now 300 people. Um, and it's been a great ride. So like you say, you hit up Aristotle and a few others. Your network is immense. If you guys talk about people that are connected, they talk the six degrees of Kevin Bacon, the six degrees of Chad Bronstein is in full effect. I, you guys don't even understand. From Mike Tyson to Ric Flair, he's calling me on the phone. He's like, hey, I was just here with Iron Mike, whatever, you know. So how does how does this happen? Like your 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 six degrees of Chad Bronstein. I guess it just happens with like it's people, right? It's yeah. uh I always say when you uh, you know, when you are running a sales organization, you talk about champions, right? And people that introduce you, like Ian Bernstein, right? Ian will introduce me to 20 different people. Um, how I got to Mike was Philo had a guy working for us named Brian Spears, who's Brittany Spears' brother. And Daniel Carcillo is the founder of uh, Wisana. Okay, so, wait. so Brian Spears, Brittany Spears' brother, was working for Philo. Correct. So I want to follow this through, okay? So keep going. So we, you know, we talk about your psychedelics conference was yesterday. And cannabis, we worked on destigmatizing cannabis. And the, better, the best people to do that are people with loud voices. So I told Daniel, we need to get in front of Mike Tyson. So we called Brian Spears, we told Brian Spears, hey, can you get us in front of Mike? Because Brian lived in Vegas. And so he got us to Mike's brother-in-law. And then we brought Mike on as a strategic advisor of Wisana to really talk about traumatic brain injury and the effects of psychedelics. From there, we started to really understand Tyson, his last, I'm not gonna name the name, but his last cannabis company. And then the same thing we did with Philo, I hit up Adam Wilkes, who's the CEO of Tyson 2.0, who's sitting the beautiful bald head right there. Did you know him um, before? Yeah, I did know him, because he was a client of uh, Philo's. So he ran- Adam, Adam, give a wave, stand up, so people see Tyson, oh, you don't have to stand. Tyson 2.0, guys, you wanna meet him, he's right there. Yeah. There you go, Adam. Yeah. And so, you know, um, we put it together, Tyson 2.0 together, Philo runs all the advertising for it. So you ask me how I do all these things, they're very synergistic. Adam works, that's the Philo team right there. Adam works really closely with all of us. And um, we got a lot of retail scale because of our relationships with Philo. So we hit up Columbia Care to do that partnership because Columbia Care was a client of Philo's and we brought Mike. So it's, I think the, you know, for my success, it's synergies and people. Like that whole table right there 
and my team, I wouldn't be here without them, right? So it's about who's behind you and who's helping you delegate and execute. And so that's that's how Philo is. And, and the guy with the yellow shoes is just a badass. This so Aristotle uh, ran Marcus Simonis' portfolio. He uh, did? He sold a sunglass company to them, and he nagged me every day. And I just like Ben Zing, I was his biggest client. So I bought all his sunglasses. Wait, you? Oh, you did? I had my I had him go to Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and I would do client road shows. And he would do a sunglass event for all my clients. Oh, really? Yeah, and so I met him that way. And then I, when I started Philo, I was like, you should come with me and do this because he's a startup. He loves startups. He's a hustler. He'll, yeah. He was carrying boxes in our small little WeWork office, doing anything anything he needed to do to make this successful. And, uh, you know, he's, he's my partner in so crime. where are your sunglasses now? I, they're in my room. All right. Because I'll lose them. So that's his, his whole sunglass company was, if you lose them, you can get them for 50% off. And I lose my sunglasses all the time. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know? So, yeah. Uh, um, or you need to put a tracking device on. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Marcus Limonis, he sold, he worked for him. He sold, yeah, he sold his company, Marcus. And, uh, yeah. and then, it, you know, he ran his CPG portfolio. So that, that's, I got to just do a plug here. That's the power of the network that he has. That's the six degrees of Chad Bronstein. You're at this Benzinga Cannabis Conference. It's a lot bigger than we've had in the past, but there's so many relationships here. And listen, the badges are sometimes the wrong way. Go to someone, turn the badge, and use it as an icebreaker, well, literally. Three, three years ago, I was yeah. at the Benzinga Conference. I met Jason. He didn't know who I was. I was a nobody. He was uh, a, and uh, In Chicago, yeah. this guy is walking. He, like he said, he was a nobody. He was a nobody. You know how much money he's raised since then? $140 million. Yeah. So in Chicago, he, met, he was at our conference, probably met someone there. Yeah, I met, I mean, we were talking about this. Jeff's another, he's my chief commercial officer, Phil, is alchemy, right? And he, he saw, he came, I made him come to the Miami conference. I was trying to hire him. Which one? Which one? The, the last Miami conference, okay. Jeff. Jeff, okay. Jeff sold his company to Salesforce for 880 million. For how and much? 880 million. Oh, so that was yeah. more than me. Yeah, so he, uh, well, he I, had to, I had to really convince them to come to Phil. Benzinga sold them. He came to Benzinga in Miami with me. Where, 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 where's our like cut, you know? We <laughs> yeah. don't got, we got to, uh, yes, yes, yes. We haven't sold fuel yet. Yeah, we're, yeah, not, no. we're not in your. We don't. We don't, we don't want to cut. We, yeah, we're not in your boat. We're not in your boat yet. We don't even want to cut. We <laughs> want to see great deals happen. You guys are all in the room, connecting, meeting people after this thing. Go outside, talk to people, connect with the badge of the wrong way. Three years ago, I met this guy in Chicago, and it's three years later, as I just repeated three years three times. Okay, and three whatever. His company is huge. And we're going to get to how big his company is in a second. And you're not going to believe the deals that they're doing. But you met and you didn't, you didn't have Tyson 2.0. You didn't have this. And you didn't have Wisana, right? Nope. Wisana was interesting. Uh, I, have you guys saw Daniel Carcillo speak yesterday? He's an incredible uh, story. He reached out to me on LinkedIn. He lives in Chicago. He played for the Blackhawks, two-time Stanley Cup champion. And he wrote to me. And I, I'm not a hockey fan. And I didn't know who he was. I watched his story. And he asked me to help him uh, with the psychedelics uh, with Wisana. And so we took it public. We raised about $20 million for it. And, uh, you know, the mission is to help people with traumatic brain injury. But it happened from a LinkedIn message because he saw the success Fido was having and he saw it was local in Chicago. He needed the support. And I loved his story. And then, you know, Aris Jeff was my first investment. Aristotle came on and was doing all the back end with me. Conrad helped me create the name. And so you see the Nicole Cosby, who's our chief legal officer, did all the, the legal work, looked at all the contracts. So Philo helped with our resources, uh, with Daniel, given the resources to be a good CEO and to run the company. That's amazing. You, ha you have the core. You have yeah. such a strong core. And by the way, your wife helped with the name too. Yeah, well, my, yeah my wife helped with the name. And to be honest with you, uh, Selena was the reason why I started Philo. Oh, really? Because we lived a nice life. And I said, I'm going to go start a canvas company and take a huge risk and a pay cut. And she said, I support you. Uh, you do this risk because I didn't smoke weed before I started, not much before I started feel. Then I started to really learn. And Brian Kaplan who's over there. I was meeting him. He's at Timeless in Arizona telling him my ideas. And now he works for Philo. So it's like back to that, you know, that deeper separation. Network. Yeah. But it's also about working with people you have chemistry with. Yeah. You, Patrick and Elliot, you guys are a tripod. Like you guys have great connections. Me and my like team. I have to have chemistry and trade on energy. That's it. That's yeah. it. And so now, but, but uh, the Philo and this whole story, but before we get to Philo and what you guys do, I want to get to one more thing. Health is very important to you. And that's partly why these companies exist, but health is very important to you. You're very in shape. Like how does health made a difference in your life? And like, what do you do to stay in shape and to have these guns? Yeah. 
the, uh, the interviewers usually touch the guest uh, arms and feel their biceps. I don't know, so uh, I, I didn't take the interview. I don't class. have the. I, I right now I just cardio. Just to like me and Conrad were talking about this. Cardio is it the elliptical? The is it tennis? Run. Hockey? Run and I play tennis with Aristotle in Tampa. Okay. He's not very good, but it's a lot of chasing his bad balls, you know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm running all the time. Okay. <laughs> so it's uh. So that's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, and I. Uh, well, what about eating? Do you eat healthy? Yeah, I eat really healthy. Okay. Because prior to starting Philo, I was traveling four days a week, and I was eating like entertaining. He had steaks all the time, and I stopped cut out red meat and just started eating healthy because. You know, wait, red meat's out still. I don't eat red meat. Yeah. Hold on. You have a dinner a couple nights from now. What are you going to eat there? Fish. For real? Yeah. I mean, he's going to a, that's, I mean, you can clap that up. That's clap up. He's going to the steak. Okay. Whatever. I won't go into that. All right. So Philo, tell uh, for the person who's in sixth grade, tell this audience, the worldwide audience watching the 2000 people as well, what Philo does in the, in the most basic terms. So think of feel as like, I like to say the sales force of cannabis, right? We have multiple solutions. So if I use a Columbia Care as an example, um, just to make it you know, easy with an example, we have a compliance software. We it's hyper local and we help law firms like DLA Piper and Columbia Care uh, stay ahead of local jurisdictions. Then we bought a company called Data All that was a loyalty software which we bought it, rebuilt the technology. Wait, how long ago did you buy Data Owl? Um, a year ago. And you already integrated it, rebuilt the technology, the whole thing? Yeah, so in three weeks, we we're going to launch the version three of the technology. But yeah, we, we also bought Canaregs, and that's where we got a Benzinga conference too. Wait, did and you meet them at a Benzinga conference? No, but, but kind of the same thing. You, we, can, you entertain, you build your relationships at the Benzinga conference. That, no, that's true. Yeah, you, but yeah. you could just lie and say you met them too. Yeah. But, okay. but um, yeah. we rebuilt that technology, which is the legal side, and then... We have the largest data marketplace um, in, you know, in cannabis, but now in the mainstream market. So we have brands like Dunkin' Donuts buying data from us. And uh, why they do that is because they don't know that Jason, Jason wears a Rolex. He drives a nice car. He, lives, he, has, he shops in Nordstrom's. But they don't know that Jason goes to Loom in Michigan and buys a bunch of marijuana. And there's all these different correlations you can make with that. You're leisurely spending $200 a week on weed. Why wouldn't Nike want to target you? Because they know you can afford it. Why wouldn't a car manufacturer want to target you because you're spending $3 a week on weed? Because they know you can afford leasing a car. Um, pharma buys their data because they don't want to lose share shift uh, to the cannabis industry. Because instead of buying ibuprofen or Aleve, you're taking cannabis medicinal products. So they want to make sure that they have that conversation with you. So we have over 7,000 brands that are the, the very large brands buying data from us. And we're integrated into every major platform, like Google, Trade Desk, et cetera, where you can go into the platform and buy our data. So in other words, maybe this is a bad analogy. Are you a much better Nielsen? So Nielsen's a great company. Has that ever been an analogy? That's a, first off, that's amazing you said that. Nielsen just went private for $16 billion. I know, I know. I, I was an investor. Nielsen's a great oh. company. But what I like to say, and Conrad is our chief marketing officer, what we were saying is, Nielsen has, you know, the data that you can, you know, you know what you're getting with them. Philo's data of the future. So cannabis is data that you don't, you can't attribute to that. Cryptocurrency is now becoming a, a more and more talked about and trend, right? You have gaming, which is a big conversation. Those data sure. sets are where Philo is going. And those are, so you're going to get into other sectors. Correct. Okay. And so when you, so when you, when you're calling Inspire Brands or Dunkin' Donuts and you're like, Hey, this is Conrad, or this is uh, Chad. We want to, you know, do you want data that helps you where your customers are growing? Is it hard to convince the customers, like, hey, right now they don't buy data? Like, you know what I mean? Like, sometimes it's like, how do? You, what's that sell process for you guys? Well, so you know, Jeff, myself, everyone, we educate. It took two years to educate big brands. So when we get on a call with a big brand, this is called Inspire. Like, why the fuck am I talking to a data? cannabis yeah, company, that's what right? I, yeah. And we would have so much fun with it because once you started to educate them and say the, the, what, what the data is and what they could do with it, it took us a year, but we now have very conservative brands that you would have never thought would buy our data. And I think what's important is before this, I was competing against Google, Trade Desk, Moby, all of us were. In that, and you can't talk about much different differentiation. People were uptight. When you're going into the ad agency, they talk to fucking a thousand vendors a day. So for us, what was great was we talked about something different and everyone opened up. So like, oh, I ate edibles with my husband. 
last night. We're smoking, me and my, me and my friends are smoking flour the day before. So it opened up the floodgates to have more of an intimate relationship with them versus that uptight vendor relationship. Yeah, yeah. So that was the, that was the fun for us and it took a lot of education, but it was always, it's still fun to have that conversation. So, 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 so you're basically at level one with this company, not in terms of revenue or scale, but you've gotten the acceptance by mainstream companies. So now it's just a question of like, hit the numbers and go. I mean, right? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the thing for us is we're gonna grow, continue to grow at scale. We're 300% year over year. We did our first quarter revenue in this quarter, what we did in 2021. Really? So, so our growth is pretty astronomical and uh, it's done because we have a good team. We're 300 people. Are, we're, are you guys based in mostly in Chicago or worldwide? No, so we just bought a company last week, not in cannabis, a data company. We're in Porto, Armenia, Israel, Sri Lanka, Chicago, Denver, LA, and New York. What was the company bought last week or is that a secret? No, it's Tomasio. We were public with it. Tomasio was a data play um, in the ad tech industry. We, we partnered with them, Contextual Data. They have 50 people, 30 of their engineers are in Porto. And we engineering is hard to come by. And so we look at companies that have really good engineering talent so we can continue to beef up our engineering. So engineering is what allows you to get to these other verticals and other products? Yeah, and build what we're doing. Be able to, let like you said, launch, uh, buy a company in a, a year ago and rebuild a whole new technology. That's good. Yeah. So now, guys, there's a debate here. There's a debate and people say the wrong name. The name of the company is Philo, but some people say Philo. So I, uh, Chad, do you want to correct them or is it fine? What, what's it's, this? It's, it's Philo. Um, everyone says that and it's actually a good starting of a conversation. But uh, we created that name in my, when we were in literally no office space, just in my uh, house with a whiteboard. And yeah. so that's how it came yeah. out. And, and Philo, the way that to remember it, if you have, is like, you got a feeling, you know, like, <laughs> Feel, let's feel it. Philo, that's it. That's because uh, Philo, Philo. I mean, at the end of the day, if they're talking about you, you're 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 doing yeah, well. Yes. You know. And then, um, tight. Can we talk a little about Tyson 2.0. Yes. Rick, so what's this Tyson 2.0? Ric Flair. I know. I think we have Ric Flair tomorrow. Mike Tyson tomorrow. Chad. Yeah. Um, Adam right there. So we got the whole crew. So what what's Tyson 2.0 all about? Tyson 2.0 is an IP uh, branding company. We uh, have become. I think they're one of the most well-known brands in the space. We, we launched, and not everyone loved it, but we launched Mike Bites, um, and most people loved it, but you know, we got, you got mixed feedback, but it went viral. And uh, you it know, went we had, viral, Mike we, had, we had Howard Stern, Jimmy Kimmel, everyone talking about it. And um, you know, we actually are gonna be creating, re reach out to Evander Holyfield as well. Uh, people don't realize this, but Mike and Evander are very good friends. So everyone's like, oh, it's, they're good friends. And so, I think it's important. Tyson 2.0, uh, we, la we launched in December. Um, we have grown astronomically. Uh, we raised $8 million from some of the most strategic investors in the cannabis space. So the key was and with Tyson 2.0, a lot of celebrity brands, we talk about this all the time with me and Adam, and is that a lot of celebrity brands don't make it because they don't have distribution. And so the key for us for our success was that we struck a deal that allowed us to get distribution and we're very good at marketing. Mike allows us to get Kevin Hart to come on Hotboxing, Paul Pierce, Scott Storch, all these big names, and they all love Mike. And so Mike is an advocate for cannabis. He smokes a lot of weed every week, it helps him, and he's outspoken about it. And so it's very much on brand when we, when we went out to market, and it's all premium cannabis, we have multiple SKUs, we've done a lot of collaborations, um, and it's going very well, and then Ric Flair, was my neighbor, my boat neighbor in Tampa. I told you the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm a big WWE fan. Adam, a lot of people debated about Ric Flair, and I said, Ric Flair creates nostalgia, and Mike has nostalgia. What people don't understand is celebrities don't all have nostalgic value. A five-year-old knows who Mike Tyson is, and your great-grandfather or grandmother would know who Mike Tyson is. Same with Ric Flair. Ric Flair is a cultural icon. Can you do the noise? How am I gonna do it now? Either can I? I don't know what he's gonna do. He's gonna do it. He's gonna do it tomorrow. I don't know how to do it, but I just tried. Okay. But yeah, so the so Rick Flair, Rick Flair drip, we launch, and um, you know, Rick also has that nostalgic factor. Yeah. Now, so that's tomorrow, guys. Don't don't miss it. But um, I know we only have a minute left. We've talked about the six degrees of Chad Bronstein. You guys, if you haven't met him, 
it, literally you should surround him, get around this guy, make deals. I know he's not here to sell himself. He, we met him three years ago and he was nice and small, but <laughs> at least his team, meet his team. And there's a yeah. guy with yellow shoes, you'll easily be able to point him out. And that's the guy with the sunglass guy, Marcus Limonis. <laughs> Anything, Chad, that I didn't say or we didn't talk about? So I know Javier is like, like looking at me like I'm some crazy dude. So, Chad, anything that we need to say about you or anything? No, that, no I think you, other than I think you said it all. I mean, badass, six degrees, Tyson 2.0, we saw it. Um, we got, um, we got yeah. obviously Philo, not Philo. Um, you got a feeling, that song, you know. Yeah. And that's it. I don't know. But yeah, I what, think, no, you, thanks for having me. I think. I'm super impressed. Do you feel like you're just you getting did. started? I think we're just getting started. I was going to give you a compliment. Okay, yeah, I'm go. super impressed with what you guys did here. I think everyone walking around this room that was at any Benzingas, you have double the amount of people, and you guys bring a lot of people in the community together, and this is how we all what we all miss. So you guys should be very proud of what you guys have done, and I'm, and I'm, I'm honored to be here. No, thank you. And if you, yeah. guys, if you guys didn't get at lunch, there's an upstairs room where you can still watch the video. Huge room, 600 tables there. So upstairs, there's lunch. I just want to make sure you guys don't go hungry at a cannabis event. That wouldn't be good, right? Yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you. you, Chad. Appreciate it.